And we're back at 8 o'clock on this Friday morning. It is the 23rd day of April, 1999, and we're looking at a huge crowd that is gathered outside our studios this morning on Rockefeller Plaza. It's a clear spring morning. We appreciate their coming by. I don't feel like a particularly gracious host, though, though, because I'm not there to greet them. Instead, I'm in Washington this morning, but I'm sure they're not bothered by that because Matt Lauer is holding down the fort at NYC. And Matt, and I know in, in this half hour, you're going to be chatting it up with Monica Lewinsky. Monica is in the building, as they say, Katie. That's right. She's back in this country after a most successful book signing tour in Europe. Her book, Monica Story, doing very well on both sides of the Atlantic. We're going to see how she's doing now that the glare of the media spotlight has dimmed a bit and she's had some time to reflect on the tumultuous events of the last year. We'll talk to her in just a few minutes, but first, Ann Curry has the news of the headlines. Ann? All right, thanks a lot, Matt. Good morning once again, everybody. Police found another bomb in Columbine High School Thursday in Littleton, Colorado, a bomb so big they think it could have destroyed the entire school. The explosive device contained a gasoline can and a 20-pound propane tank. NBC News has learned that police are questioning numerous associates of the two teen suspects to see if they had help in bringing the bombs to the school. NATO attacked Yugoslavia's state-run television during the night and temporarily knocked out the main station. It was broadcasting a pre-recorded interview with Slobodan Milosevic when the station suddenly went off the air. Later today, NATO leaders meet in Washington. They'll be observing the 50th anniversary of the alliance. Army investigators are examining the wreckage of a Black Hawk helicopter that crashed on Thursday in Kentucky. Seven soldiers were killed. Four others were hurt. And finally now, Florida's governor is asking for federal help in dealing with the state's damaging wildfires. Governor Jeb Bush wants President Clinton to declare states in, of emergency in 67 counties. So far this year, fires have burned up nearly a quarter of a million acres in Florida. Those are the headlines. It is now 8.02. Let's turn now to Al for the weather. Thanks a lot, Ann. And your weather this half hour, well, we've got quite a bit of... Uh sunshine for much of the country for Saturday, though a lot of wet weather from Texas on into the southwest, sunny in the northwest, and as far as Sunday is concerned, you can expect to see again showers move into the northwest, more rain through the Gulf Coast on up into the uh, midsection of the country, sunny here in the northeast on into the Great Lakes, but some showers and even some uh, snows in the upper elevations in northern New England. That's what's going on around the country. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Well, good morning to you on this Friday. Here's the way things look from the northwest sky cam at Newport. Some of the fog and low clouds still finishing their burn-off this morning. It's going to be a fantastic day all over the northwest with sunshine as the storm clouds go to the north, head for Canada. So we're going to be experiencing sunny and warmer weather throughout the northwest. Temperatures look like this. 73 for a high in Salem, 72 in Hood River, Portland at 73, close to 70 along the beach. It's 8.03. Now here's Matt. Al, thank you very much. Monica Lewinsky has faded from the headlines here at home, but for the past month, she's been barnstorming all over Europe promoting her book. It's called simply Monica's Story and was written by Andrew Morton. Monica Lewinsky, Andrew Morton, good morning to both of you. Thank you for coming in. We good appreciate it. Good morning, Matt. Let's talk about this tour of Europe. How would you say you were received by the people over there? Surprisingly warmly. Um, it, was, uh, it was quite amazing to me and very heartwarming me as well. I understand that they treated you like a downright movie star, that they lined up everywhere you went, that they, there was a crush of media, that the police had to be called in to keep the crowds down. You got marriage proposals. Well, if anybody um, saw Martin Savage's piece, I think it had a great color of what the book signing tours were like. It was, um, what would you say? Well, she, she was, some, some Scottish guy asked her to marry her in, <laughs> up in Glasgow. She had various invitations for the dates and dinner. One guy said, come and join me in Mongolia for the summer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't quite understand whether that was a double-edged uh, request. Well, do you think there's a huge contrast in the way the people in Europe view you versus the people in this country view you after this last year and a half? Well, certainly. I think, um, I, fortunately for them, that people outside this country weren't um, touched as much and affected as much as the events of the past year. And um, I think also a lot of the European countries and, and in the U.K., they have less channels on their TV, so they really haven't had as much exposure as America has had with all the details of everything that happened. I read one of the articles from Europe, and, and you said in that article that you really kind of, it was a boost of confidence for you to be over there. Were you then nervous 
to come back home to the United States? Very. Why? Um, well, I think that, that it's, it's certainly been difficult for me uh, to, having never been in the, in the front lines or in the spotlight before this, to have to learn how to uh, accept criticism and to be judged by a lot of people for so many different things. And um, sometimes it's frustrating to feel that you're not exactly communicating what you think you're communicating. So I was a little bit nervous. I'm I'm glad you bring that up, criticism and communicating what you think you're communicating. One of the criticisms I've heard, Monica, is that, and this is from people all over the place who say, I don't think Monica gets it. I don't think she understands that this year and a half wasn't only about her. Oh. Have you had a chance to reflect on that? Sure. Um, I, uh, I'm sorry if, if I've given that impression. That's certainly not how I feel. Um, probably from, from my shoes and where I sit and for the people in my life, my family and my friends, the things that have happened to me have affected us more than they do everyone else. But I certainly recognize what this has done to the entire country, to the president and his family, to everybody who's been involved, all the legal bills. It's, um, I think sometimes it's hard to have everybody feel the same way about something, but I've certainly learned a lot. When you say what this has done to the country, you realize that for much of that year, this country came to a screeching halt. In Congress, some would say foreign policy took a backseat to the scandal Mm -hmm. that the administration was so concerned about protecting itself. Does it make you feel bad? Sure it does. I think, um, and and I hope this doesn't sound offensive, I just would hope that people remember, while I made the mistake of confiding in people privately, I didn't ever want this to become public. And I went so far as to sign a false affidavit so that this didn't come out. Um, So I think that in that regard, it's... um, people need to recognize, I think, that, that it's not all my fault. <laughs> let, let, me, let me ask you about some of the choices you've made recently, and, and one in particular. You said, and you've apologized before, you said in the book, you don't want to make a career out of being Monica Lewinsky. The Oscars roll around Monica, and you show up at that Vanity Fair party knowing that the only reason you were invited to that party was because you are Monica Lewinsky, and that every camera in that room was going to turn to you when you walked in. Why'd you do that? I... I've had um, I had numerous opportunities to do different things in the past year, and it was always an inappropriate time. And um, I felt that it was uh, unlike maybe the White House Correspondents' Dinner, which I was invited to and, and would never attend in a million years. This was something that I thought it was okay for me to have a little bit of fun. Not possibly more discreet to just say, you know what, I'm going to skip this. Mm. Not so give once in a, a lifetime chance, back. I'd be I'd be surprised to see um, if there would be a lot of people who would turn down such an opportunity. It was it was a neat experience to um, celebrate the movies just like everyone else. Andrew, you spent a lot of time with Monica. Do you think, in in simple terms, that she gets it? Yes, I think she does. I mean, every day in every way, she gets it because. Um, Obviously, she's talking now on television in front of a, a nationwide audience, but every day she's, she's uh, thrown into um, pessimism, despair. She's always worrying about, uh, about uh, her future and, and about what's happened in the past. But I think this is the, and this is the problem for Monica now, that her past is con- constantly paraded before her, and until that past is, is away, you know, is expunged, she can't move forward to a future. But Monica, it's going to be you who has to decide how to handle this very specific kind of celebrity that has been mm-hmm. attached to you. You can revel in it, or you can go underground and distance yourself from it. Well, I think that what I need to do is I need to make sure that um, I put myself in a position where I'm able to take care of my debts from this past year, and that I'm also able to take care of myself in the next few years while I'm healing from this past year and trying to figure out where I go from here. So I, uh, I think it's, it, it certainly is not something that I, as I said in the book, that I don't want to make a long-term career out of being Monica Lewinsky, the intern. And if something good comes from this and I can do something to make a positive contribution to society, I will. I know you have revelations almost on a daily basis about how you acted then versus how you would act today. One of the things you said 
based on your hectic schedule in, in Europe was, my gosh, I'm going from book signing to media appearance. And I think you told a reporter one day, you said, I stopped and I thought last night, and I said, I am so busy, this must be what the president's schedule was like all the time. Now it doesn't seem so strange that he didn't call me all the time. And while I think that's a great revelation, I was shocked that you didn't realize that at the time, that this was the president of the United States and he had a lot of things on his plate. Of course I knew he had a lot of things on his plate. I, I mean, you can't read into that comment that I thought the president just sat around thinking whether or not he should call me. But it's hard to understand until you walk in someone else's shoes or do something that's similar. Uh, I had never had a schedule that was that crazy. And it, I couldn't understand it. I think that it was also part of... It, Part of being in love and part of the, the chaos of a relationship sometimes is that you don't always see everything clearly. That wasn't the only thing I didn't see clearly in the relationship. If you think about moving on from here and if you say you don't want to make a career out of being Monica Lewinsky, you're going to have to figure out what you do want to make a career out of. Your dad was on this program, I think, March 9th, talked to Katie. He said, in his opinion right now, you are not employable. Do you agree with that? Um, I think in the... In the in the sense of uh, being able to go work in an office and in, in, in looking for a job that I might be looking for had this not happened, I agree. Uh, I think that there, I, I know certainly there's going to be some opportunities and, and things that will come about that where I might be able to uh, lend my name in a way that helps and does something positive. Give me an positive. example of that. I mean, you know, it's a little bit like, you know, there, there might be some people who would be worried with you lending your name to a sure. certain post. So what would be an sure. example of what you think would be a positive outcome? Um, well, I, I, I don't want to get into too many details because it just wouldn't be appropriate, but I've been approached to be um, involved in, a, in an organization that is um, working to get a message out um, against things in, in a certain country and that they felt that the way people... Um, I guess paid attention to what had happened that they felt my speaking out on this issue might be helpful. Would be an immediate draw. When you think of the president and what's happened to him because of his relationship with you, how much damage do you think has been done to his legacy? I mean, he was at a press conference recently talking about the war in Yugoslavia and a reporter stood up and said, what gives you the moral authority? to be the commander-in-chief of a situation like this? That's a devastating question yeah. at a time when we're sending troops into harm's way. But it's an outcome of what's happened over the last year and a half. I certainly hope, and, and I think that in legacies are usually developed, I think, some years after someone's been in office. And I hope that, that people will be able to look back and see all of the positive things that he and his administration have done and that this will just be a small footnote. And I think every year that passes, every new history book that's written, th this will become smaller and smaller because this administration has done a lot of wonderful things for this country. He's in trouble possibly in the future. He was just found, as you know, in contempt of court. The judge in the Paula Jones case said that, that he was not truthful in his statements he made about you in the Paula Jones deposition. Did that come as a surprise to you? I don't think it would be appropriate for me to talk about that issue at all. She basically wrote in her opinion, it appears the president is asserting that Miss Lewinsky could be having sex with him, while at the same time he was not having sex with her. Is it at least a fair assessment from what you've read of his statements? I'm, I'm not going to answer that. Let me then move on. Let me ask you how much time you've spent thinking about Mrs. Clinton in the last several months. Well, I, I've... Um I certainly have a lot of, of private sorrow and, and remorse uh, for what this has done to her and, and especially their daughter. Um, it's, uh, it's not something I'm very comfortable talking about because it's, it's a, um, it's, I know it's public for everyone else, but a lot of the pain of everything that's happened this past year to me and what's affected my family is, is private and it's hard to I think sometimes it's hard to open up your heart that much or open up your mind that much to let everybody judge you on how sorry you feel or do you feel sorry enough but you realize that she's been through an awful lot of pain in this last year and 
maybe a strong word, but I would I think appropriate humiliation. In I this think past we've all year. been humiliated, unfortunately. But let me read you something from your book. This is a quote. Sometimes I miss the joy that I felt as I walked toward the Oval Office after I got the call. My pulse would race, my face would be flushed. I got excited just thinking about his smell, his touch, the warmth of his body when he was close to mine. I couldn't wait for that first moment of a delicious kiss from my handsome. Now, Mrs. Clinton and Chelsea haven't moved to another planet. You're writing that, both of you, about her husband. But look at your responsibility as a journalist. You've just read this on TV. You wrote it and have but sold hundreds just... of thousands of copies. No, of I it. understand, but then it's someone choosing uh, to. I, 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 well, let me just let her finish what she was saying. But I just think that you're someone who buys the book is choosing to read this story and choosing to hear my truth about what happened, so that everything that's been out there. And I think to sort of ask me a question like that, and I understand, I can't imagine that Mrs. Clinton would read this book, and Probably I hope she not. doesn't. But when you're but writing so it, do you, you think, let's not put that out there because there's a, a wife and a daughter involved here. But you just asked me this question. Do you not think when you sat there reading it, what if Mrs. Clinton's watching the Today Show? We've had to report on, on worse things than this over the past year and a half. That's, mm -hmm. that's almost tame by comparison. I'm just wondering, did you have second thoughts about certain details being in the book knowing that the participants in this whole situation are still very much involved. I, I think so. I mean, what, what would you say, Andrew? Yes, I mean, I, mean, I, think, I think the Monica, way we worked on it. Monica felt that certain aspects of the book were far too candid. And I just, too candid. Too candid. And I just felt that if you're going to tell the story, you may as well tell the whole story, because otherwise you'd be saying to me, well, Andrew, you didn't say this, you didn't say that, and you left it out. So I just felt that the whole story had to come out, because after all, uh, Judge Starr has revealed an awful lot of the relationship, um, a relationship which, as Monica said, she tries she try to keep private. She, risk the, the, uh, the, the, she faces the risk of going to jail to keep that uh, uh, relationship private, and it's become public, not through Monica's doing, but through the doing of somebody else. And I think it's wholly unfair to start blaming Monica for everything that's gone on, because she's the one who tried to keep it private. It's not, uh, and, so, and, and in many respects... He's not the one who was married. It was the president, an older man who was married. He made certain choices. He gave his deposition in the Portal Jones case and, and elsewhere. And he's the one who has to face the responsibility for that, not Monica Lewinsky. Monica, as you look toward the future, I think there are two schools of thought as to how this can all play out. Mm -hmm. One is that having been through so much trauma at such a young age, that everything else from here is cake, that it just can't get any worse than this. I guess the other school of thought would be that so much trauma so early will impact you for the rest of your life. Sure. Which is, is closer to the truth? Um, I think it's probably a mix of both. Uh, you, you can't come out of an experience like this without having uh, learned a lot of things that hopefully will help me to, to change, um, but also have given me strengths in certain ways. I think it's, it's already made my life incredibly difficult and different. I, I don't think people can understand what it is to lose your anonymity until you lose it and um, how you have to think about things, how you have to plan just going to the market, thinking about, well, gee, what time of the day can I go so that I can get a parking spot close to the door in case I get made at the market. I mean, it, they're just little things and it's difficult. So having it to do all over again, you take your privacy and none of this would have ever oh. occurred. Gosh, of course not. I, I mean, I, I can't imagine that anybody, after having had this experience, wouldn't wish it didn't happen. It's been horrible for everybody who's been involved and touched by this, and that includes everybody in the country. Are you going to spend some quiet time in the near future? I think so. <laughs> well, we appreciate you coming in today. Thanks. Monica Lewinsky, Andrew Morton, thank you both very much. Thanks. Thank you. 819, the book is called Monica's Story. And by the way, if you'd like to read an excerpt from Monica's Story, you can log on to our website at today.msnbc.com. We'll be right back. The new age.